You're welcome back. Today is World Environment Day, the 5th of uh, June 2023, and uh, they're focusing mostly, or we are focusing, because it's our world we're talking about. The environment doesn't belong to somebody. In fact, it belongs to everybody. And someone even said that whatever we're using now is not our own resources. We're borrowing it from children that are yet to be born. Well, how much are you contributing to making our environment safe and habitable? I, I'm glad to have in the house here joining us, okay, via Zoom anyway, uh, Omoye Ozam, Ozamere, a Nollywood actor and producer. It's my pleasure to have you. Good morning and welcome to the show, Omoye. Good morning. It's good to be on the show. Thank you for having me. Well, today is uh, World Environment Day and you are in the creative industry and all that. So let's begin with why... Um, we are even talking about this right now. Nigerians do not really think it's an issue. So why do you think it's an issue right now to be dealt with? Well, I think that really is the, the question here, that uh, with the issue of climate change, there's so many angles to come from. And one of the important angles is the fact that some people don't consider it an issue because there are more pressing issues and Nigeria is one of those. And, you know, we come from the angle of climate justice and why we're having this uh, conversation, why we did the audio drama that we did was because we wanted Nigerians to understand that when disaster happens, it happens to everybody. The place titled Does the Sky Fall on Everyone? And it addresses the fact that even though we do have more pressing economic issues, social issues in the country, we still do have a climate issue, an environmental issue, and we wanted to draw attention to that conversation. Now, if you're drawing attention to the problem of environment, are you drawing attention chiefly to the people or the citizens, or you are drawing attention mostly to the government? We're drawing attention to everyone who's involved. I believe that everyone is a stakeholder in these issues, you know, and the urgency is from the environment, you know, it, it comes from the need to address climate change, to prevent the depletion of our resources, to, you know, stop pollution or to mitigate, you know, pollution, to promote sustainable development and to achieve social justice, economic justice. Now. If the individual knows that they are disenfranchised, they are disenfranchised, then we know what to do about the disenfranchisement. And if the government understands that this is a pressing issue also, then it takes steps to address it. So everyone really is involved in this conversation. And if we think about simple things, and I like to bring it down to simple things, if we take my breakfast mug, for example, and we it said, let's say it's plastic, if I start to recycle, then I stop spending on plastic. And then we have less pollution of, uh, of dirt, you know, plastics all over the place. They're just little things that the individuals can do to make a difference. But there are also policy changes mm. that the government can make. And if we're working together, I believe that the solutions yeah, I asked, I asked that question because, for instance, the government came up at one point and said, no more using, using firewood, uh, no more using uh, charcoal and all that. Yet, you cannot buy gas. <laughs> you cannot exactly. buy, uh, you don't have electricity, so even if you have a, an electric cooker, you can't use it and all that. So people resort to going to, and you don't even have the salary to buy a, a, a desert uh, gas burner or something. Or so, a bottle of kerosene. Yeah, that was why I was asking that question. Now, climate change is a challenge, and everybody is pointing fingers at the people who dump the um, plastics in the, in the gutters, people who do one or two things. Of course, in the houses of the rich, you won't see them littered all over and all that. But um, when, we are, when, we are, when, we are, when we are directing our energy, where should it go more? That's why I asked you. You are in the creative industry, and there is... There is everything about storytelling. And so when you're telling your story to get this um, message across, who will be your target audience? The ordinary we who will be watching your movie or the people who make policies and all that. So l let's get to know where we can fit in and also see uh, what to say when the time okay, comes. I believe there's a place for everyone. The power of art really is to spark conversations, is to get us talking about the problems. It holds a mirror to society. And now what this does is we have 
in the play you'll experience an environmental activist and a politician now this is not just an ordinary politician in that sense but it's a local politician who's passionate about his people and they come into an argument so the environmentalist is speaking from a global perspective yeah. but the local politician is speaking for his people yeah. okay so if we don't burn our, our wood for fire what are we going to do mm -hmm. so it means that everyone comes together we're all stakeholders i don't believe that the play is targeted to one person one individual what we're doing is we're having conversations with in with policy makers with um environmental activists and with individuals because we believe that this isn't something that falls to one person or one group of people to do it falls to all of us including us as creatives mm -hmm. and so this is us playing our part to say hey guys here's this thing let's magnify the issues okay we walk to the policymakers. oh sir what can you do what are the policy changes that accommodate the 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 transformation that we want to see oh here mr and mrs individual what are the lifestyle changes that you need to make i mean for example wasting water you know there are parts of the world where there's no water where people are going through droughts mm -hmm. and people who have a lot of water access to water water is being wasted and i'm just saying this as a little example of the ways that we can have lifestyle changes that affect our, our climate positively you know for pollution of plastics for example there's so many ways that that plastic can be recycled you know that we we have these plastic bags you know we there's a lot of it around and when we're aware of it then we start to use less of it and if you use less of it then there's a lower demand for plastics you know uh, so this it's all it all affects everything and it's i believe that it's a cycle you know that everyone industries individuals government uh, agencies local businesses homes everybody's affected and everybody has a part to play i'm just imagining walking around a market in lagos here for instance and i don't hear uh, Madam, give me Lylon. <laughs> exactly. popular, I, I don't know how that works. It, it would be a strange world to me anyway. Uh, yes. but, but now, I asked you off camera if you were an activist, and you said no, no, no. But how did you come to get uh, other theaters to partner with you to, uh, on a podcast uh, focused on the environment and climate change? Well, the thing is, I was invited to collaborate on this project. Uh, there is a, produ a producer called Sunny Drake. He's a producer based in Canada and he partnered with the Why Not Theatre and invited eight other production companies from around the world to tell climate change stories from a local perspective and proffering local solutions. So we had one from Nigeria, there's Mauritius, Chile, India, Australia, and four provinces in Canada. And basically, what we were to do was to create. So I created, uh, the, I rather produced the Nigerian audio drama. It was written by Pemwa Deshi, a writer based in Jos. And she told a story that was dear to her heart, something that actually happened or based on an actual event in, in Jos, where a 500-year olive tree was being cut down for firewood. And when you think of a 500-year old olive tree, that tree has been standing or was standing for 500 years. And it got cut down for firewood that got burned in, let's say, a few months. Now, that's a lot of history. And if you think about the issue of deforestation in Nigeria, how trees are being chopped down and the environmental issues I think that deforestation is something that we should be talking about, you know, in Nigeria and actually making, doing, taking steps to make a difference, you know, to stop the cutting down of trees and slow down. Are we planting more trees? What are we doing instead of this, this, you know, the logging? What are we doing differently? And I, I would say that our job as creatives is really to, as I said, hold a mirror to society. It's to call attention to the issues we're not experts on the issue but what we do we do some research we find out what the issues are we magnify them and then we pass the baton onto the next set of people and that's really what we're here to do and so in a sense you would consider me an activist but really i'm an activist because i'm passionate about using storytelling for social change i'm passionate about using art you know to to drive society forward so how has that been working for you especially in nigeria how do you think um 
what hope do you have that you can really change the narrative? Because if you go to uh, or loser soon they call it or something somewhere they call Tollgate. You find the dump site of Lagos State, and there are people who actually live there. They are married and they live there. They raise children there. That is an industry for them. There are people who make a living out of the dump sites that we have the the uh, waste bins that we have around our houses and all that. So Nigerians don't seem to really care. How do you? Yes, intend? Nigerians don't think it's an issue. How 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 would you rate? your success you know in trying to change the narrative i know it is small small by small as we say it but small by small yeah. yes <laughs> how, how has it been how has it worked out for you well i think that the rating will go to the people who do ratings for us it's it's having the conversations it's and this is how we start you know we come on your show and thank you for having us we have this conversation on your show we go to the radio stations we go to the grassroots and i do believe that there can be and still is a lot of work for people who work in the dump sites. And the idea really is that when, let's think for example of recycling, if trash is properly separated, then it makes their job easier. If I, at my house I have two, two bins, one bin for recycling and one bin for waste that is biodegradable. It means that all my food goes in that one and then, you know, it can be used as manure, for example. And the, the trash that goes into the recycle bins will go straight to these people who make a living from recycling trash. And they don't have to do it in those deplorable conditions. They actually don't. They can do it in a nice sanitary place where um, food waste and even, you know, all kinds of, imagine baby diapers mixing with plastic bottles and they have to sort through that. They shouldn't have to if in my house I separate them already. And that's really the practice is that what we're doing this and one of the ways we'll measure this, the success of these things is when individuals start to credit um, an interview that someone gave, either DME, Miss Lysette, some of the actors on the production of myself, just to say that, oh, I heard about this on the radio, I heard about this on television, I read about this somewhere on Twitter or on, on Instagram, and I decided to make it change. Let me give you an example. When I was much younger, I read something about um, about water, about the way, and I said, oh, and I became very conscious of how I used water. And so when, you know, sometimes, you you know, you'd, you'd read this thing where they'll tell you, and it's practical things, uh, brush your teeth using a cup of water rather than turning on the faucet and allow the water to just keep pouring. And when we're conscious about these things, when we realize that we want to leave this earth a little better for the people coming on after us, mm -hmm. you know, for example, it wasn't, I'll hear people like in my parents' generation who say it wasn't really this hot when it was hot, you know, when we see that or when it's cold, it gets way colder than it used to be. Those are changes. And we wonder what changes are going to take place for the next generation of people. Our job really is to is to give back to the earth as the earth is giving to us. You know, I think that it's an exchange and mm. we should be it should be a symbiotic relationship. And, you know, I would, I would love that that happens. Maybe we are, our, our skins are getting lighter. That's why we feel the hotness and the coldness. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's just a side. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, walk us through, our uh, time is running out. Walk us through the kind of hurdles that someone who is telling your kind of story is likely to face. What do you, with your own experience, what are the hurdles that you have to go through to put this message uh, out there? Because... Nigeria, is, it's, it's a difficult thing, especially when, uh, like my guest before you came on said, it's, it's a matter of culture. So when you're speaking yes. to a culture of a people, you, you're bound to have some challenges. Uh, so what are some of these challenges that you find in the course of doing what you do uh, for people to get the message? Well, I think one of the challenges would be, some of the challenges rather would be the challenges you'd normally find with telling a story. And whatever story you want to tell, there'll be certain challenges. Um, maybe the only difference would be that with something that is more, uh, shall I say, conscious, you'd find that uh, it's not as entertaining as it would normally be. And so as storytellers, we have to try to make our stories 
as entertaining, as compelling as any other story. And once we do that, I believe the audience will be inspired, the audience will be attracted to it, and they'll listen to it and they'll get the message. You know, they say that a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down, and we are, art is that spoonful of sugar. If we walked up to somebody and say, hey, you need to stop doing this, oh, you need to change your life, I'm gonna say, why? But if they are told a story, and then, so the challenges would be, uh, the usual challenges with storytelling, uh, there'll be sometimes it's funding, sometimes it's getting people to pay attention to, to, to it because it's not the mainstream storytelling. But then I believe that there's room for everyone. And for, say, let's imagine that I'm the first person to do something like this. Another person sees it and knows that it's possible. And just that window you know, allows an, the next person to tell a story just like this, or tell a story a little different but similar, you know, and once there are more and more stories in the landscape, I believe that it becomes a bigger issue than it, it, it might have appeared to be. So as for challenges, it's really, really the same, mm. as, as some people say, it's the same but different. Okay, let's just talk uh, um, finally to the people of Nigeria, because uh, before the story is told on the screen, um, we have the opportunity right now for you to tell a story uh, to the people, not naturally a story, but say something to the people who may not have had this message before now. What are you telling the Nigerian people? What kind of behavioral change do you want them to have and why? Just in one minute, please. Okay, can I do it in vernacular? Okay. Okay, country people, how far now? My name is Naomi Oyeo. You know, say this climate matter, they say now we both in, they say no be, no be we, you know, be our problem. But you know, say when rain they fall, they fall on everybody. And uh, when uh, sun they shine, they shine on everybody. So whether now we bo or no be we bo, it go happen to all of us. So what thing we go do, we go do our part so that other people will do their part. And if everybody they do their part, whether it be mama or Peking or it be government worker, whether you they pack the tea for uh, for Oshodi, whether you they uh, drive your fancy moto, make all of us understand, say, we fit make difference for our society. So whether na robber, where they throw away anyhow, no true way I'm like that again. In fact, some people deal with them, they collect, they, they give you money, they, they give you benefits when you bring your plastic, go give them. You know, if not tree, you know they cut, cut tree. Because tree, they take very long time to grow. Tree not like human being. Tree gets spirits. Tree gets all those things where you've, you go look up if you do a many high, you go grow. Tree get life. And they take long time. And tree get very plenty benefits for us. See the flooding where they happen for Nigeria, when rain they fall, people they die, you know, not issue. So we believe, say, if everybody they do small, small things, you get plenty different uh, agencies, uh, what they call them, climate change environmentalist uh, agencies, NGOs, where they do things, go follow them, help them, join them, do their work, tell them, say, what do I feel do? How I feel okay. help? Everything we they do, what else in life hard though? But it gets small, small things where we feel do every single one of us mm. so join these agencies partner with agencies in your area there's some in lagos there's the new dawn project you can go up to them and uh, get on their website it's the new dawn project go up to them and sign up to work with them okay. sign up to be a partner with what all they're right. doing in your area thank okay. you very much all right the king will find pigeons come sweet for him mouth <laughs> yeah, I see pigeon the sweet for the user and sign contract. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Omoye Ozamere, for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Okay, we've been talking with a Nollywood actor and producer uh, who is also a cl climate or environment uh, activist. And uh, even though she would not accept to be called that word, she just wants to be called Nollywood actor and producer. Uh, we were talking about climate change, we were talking about environmental sustainability on World Environment Day. We'll take a short break when we return. We'll be doing sports and wrapping up on the show. Stay with us.